and, cer- and certainly for us uh, as, as an organization we, we're still trying to work out how exactly it is we want to use uh, to use BIM kind of ra- ranging from just just trying to meet our statutory obligation all those obligations that are kind of coming down the pipeline at us um, meet, meeting those fundamental needs but then to what extent BIM can be a vehicle for kind of improving improving performance longer term and I think we're still trying to work out kind of wh- where we feel we want to be uh, on that spectrum and it's just been great to to be able to network you know with 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 people with with such a range of backgrounds um, some of which are, are in a similar place to us we're, we're still not completely decided yet you know we're, we're still not uh, at, at a place where we know exactly what it is that we want, but we're far more knowledgeable now about about BIM and and how it might work for us um, than, than we were a year ago. So I think that's been the most powerful thing. Um, we've been looking at um, implementing BIM um, in some of our projects. Um, it's been, I think it was 2016 that um, uh, central government was asking that all projects are BIM compliant. Uh, I know it's a little bit different for local authorities. But um, we do get funding from different places, um, especially um, there was the um, building schools for the future. So some of those projects were BIM uh, had to be BIM compliant, but they couldn't always match up to the BIM requirements. Um, and so I've been trying to look at uh, implementing um, ISO 19650 and BIM into our actual contract documents. So. Ah. Um, and a significant thing is actually s- the government soft landings and also um, I would say one of the, m- the more necessary things is that handover point um, and I think that's where I was looking at active plan in terms of um, what you can offer in, in that scenario and then also just looking at what what else is actually happening um, amongst other local authorities and other um, businesses I thought the the range of people and the range of opinions was really interesting uh, to show the what's possible and and the the ambition of what can be achieved. Um, what was was very interesting, and um, actually seeing a group of professionals who may not have known very much about it and hearing what their questions were and hearing what their um, their concerns were, were was also quite interesting. And, and what was really great is, you know, we're, we're, we're still in conversation with, with people that were at those events. So in, in terms of the opportunity to, to network with those people and subsequently get around the table with them in kind of smaller groups um, to, to have discussions with those people and, and learn from those people, I think has been really helpful to us. Uh, what, what, what was really powerful um was because because of those different perspectives there 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 isn't a one-size-fits-all solution out there you know very much you know organizations need need to find the kind of digital solution that that works best that works best for them um and i think the fact that there were so many perspectives people's experiences have been um seem to be quite different and actually as an organisation, that that's quite reassuring. I, I think there's a there's a perception that that BIM is is something that's. I mean, it, it does have some definition and it does have some some protocols, um, but that there is more one way to to, to skin the cat. Uh, and I think you know, holding holding events like that where people's experiences are, are different and and they can share those experiences, I think as a, as a client gave us confidence that actually we, we can we can design this the, the way that we need it there's a lot of jargon ar- around BIM and a lot of acronyms get get spoken and, and they can be you know confusing to, to kind of new people to the to the sector um, so again it, it's, it's been really helpful to have not not only you know consultants that have, have, have kind of done this for many years and contractors but also to have have clients there that are trying to understand this stuff for themselves as well. Um, so yeah, so, so certainly the range of people that that, that have come to these events um, has has been very helpful. 
I think I think the challenge is to, to to what extent do we want to embrace BIM in order to drive um, the the better performance of our assets, um, and then beyond that, how how do we want to use BIM to actually drive improvement into the development project process? Um, and and th those are a little bit more of a leap of faith um, in terms of a. a we can definitely see the opportunity. Um, the, the the issue is to what extent do we want to embrace it, um, and, and as you say, use use it as a vehicle for um, for improving the performance of the business in in the future. Um, and and on a, on, a, on a personal note, I think the more the more I get into understanding BIM and what the opportunities are that BIM represents, you know, I I see it as a key. A, a key ingredient um, to, to kind of improving business performance in the future. The interesting thing, I think, is that each of these stakeholders has uh, a different need for information and they understand what they're offered uh, differently. And uh, one, one of our uh, challenges in information management is to try to speak uh, in the terms of each of the stakeholders so that the messages really get us. And I think it's particularly difficult for the design team to understand client language. Um, and uh, that's something I, I uh, think is well worth trying to do so that uh, we're actually delivering what they will find useful in terms that they will find useful. Um, it's not just a matter of getting a thing built um, because we know our construction language but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that much to the client. The event in itself was very good because uh, I bumped into quite a few different people from um, other other built other companies that I'd come across. Um, not necessarily all working together, but um, one or two from different places and previous projects. So um, that was particularly good. Uh, the thing about BIM is it it, it pulls t together various different people. Um, and um, one's own specialism may be uh, you don't know what other people are thinking so it's, it's it's a really good idea to find out what those specialist stakeholders are uh, what their concerns are so that we can sort of move around to um, to help them out so that we get a good product at the end. I mean uh, BIM for housing to me uh, or, uh, is uh, essentially about rental housing, not about housing for sale. Um, and rental housing is obviously having a moment uh, in, in several things but for housing associations and for uh, commercial build to rent. But it's the life cycle um, repair and maintenance, which is really the big payback. Obviously, uh, we're, we're there to help the thing get built in the first place. But the real payback for the, for having good information uh, is over the life cycle. And I think uh, you made a good start on that um, in your session last year. Well, Max Fordham's is very interesting in a holistic approach to buildings um, in that we solve, we try and solve as many problems for the client as possible. Um, and that's we see that the operation of a building as being a big issue um, and we are steering our internal systems within Max Forums to uh, embrace BIM because we think see that as streamlining the design process which makes it easy easier to do and to collaborate with other people but it also provides a clean set of information for the contractor to to work on uh, to provide their information um, and the overall objective as we see is to uh, provide the, the, the client, the users, the asset managers um, a, a good set of data of, of what's been installed and it also helps us make sure that the building is has been built properly um, and is operating properly and um, that's a bit of a holy grail at the moment to make sure that all these things work um, and it's a bit similar to the golden thread that we've seen and in, in, mentioned in other things and we think that is a brilliant way to make sure the buildings are 
just better than they are at the moment. The whole safety case is about um, being able to uncover the audit trail of decisions and how they were made and make sure that everything that was required is actually there in place. So uh, the managed information approach seems to be inevitable. Uh, nobody is ever going to solve this issue whilst remaining in piles of paper. It's all going to have to be in good uh, common data environments that people can access over the whole life cycle uh, and get hold of exactly how the thing was made uh, and uh, and see the uh, almost the weekly uh, survey of the building going up and all the uh, components being put in place. This business about missing fast stops is is particularly revealing that something which is so easily concealed needs to be revealed and uh, audited and online available to the people that, that matter. So I think BIM is going to be uh, absolutely inherent to safe construction and safe building management for the future. Once, once I'd kind of got involved in, in those initial workshops, it became a, a, a topic that, you know, I, I and we recognised we needed to stay close to. And, you know, what was clear is, is that the BIM for Housing group had a, had a real really positive intent around trying to where, where it could try to develop a kind of standardized approach uh to bim and 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 by that not not a one size fits all um but at least get some some tools and some guidance out there that was going to sort of drive a bit of standardization into the process and that that appealed to me um in terms of something that i wanted to to be involved in um I, th I think the other thing that's been quite powerful um, is the fact that but by by getting involved in that group, we, we've tried to embrace the whole or as much of the supply chain as we could. You know, so th this isn't just about clients and consultants and contractors. You know, it's about manufacturers as well. And, and if we're going to make BIM work, th then it kind of needs to work for everyone in the supply chain. We're really looking forward, well, I'm really looking forward to coming to the event on the 10th um, and participating and seeing uh, what I can add to the whole process, because I think it's a very powerful mix of people uh, from legal clients, construction, consultancy, operation. It's it, it's the sort of the people you don't normally get together um, uh, when one's doing one's day job. So it's uh, it's great in that respect.